once again, we are back to the tired old debate on Jeremy Corbyn being a massive racist. Liz Kendall appeared on Peston and claims that the reason Jeremy Corbyn has not had the whip restored was because of him and he has only himself to blame to his face. No, and I'm afraid Jeremy only has himself to blame for the situation he's in because of his failure to apologise for what happened in the Labour Party when he was leader on anti-Semitism. Um, you know, and we were speaking earlier about what happened at the last election. The truth is, it was a catastrophic defeat but what, what, for the Labour I, what, Party. What, what apology, because maybe you'll do it now, what, what apology would you want from A Jeremy? full and frank apology, which has never happened. But let me just say this... But you accept that you haven't made a full and frank apology? I have explained many times and apologised many times for the situation that happened in the party, but you'll also know, Liz, that I appointed Shami Chakrabarti to undertake an investigation into this and produce a report, and I accepted the um, Equalities and Human Rights Commission report and the Ford inquiry indicated that everything I'd said about the scale, evil as anti-Semitism is, the scale of it within the party was grossly exaggerated. We are a party I mean, of anti-racists, like, like you and I equally are. Then. And I am proud that Keir Starmer has taken firm action on this issue since he became leader of the Labour Party and that he has changed the Labour Party since Jeremy Corbyn was leader. That he said that we love our country, that we're proud of our armed forces and we stand up for NATO. He has changed our party in saying we will root out anti-Semitism and people who think that the problem was exaggerated are actually part of the problem themselves. Mm. There's been a big change well, in the, the Labour instance. Party now, and I think that's where, you know, Jeremy had his <coughs> chance, that didn't work. It's Keir Starmer who's going to lead us into the next election with a changed Labour Party, and that is really important. But you must have... I mean, Jer Jeremy, as he said, has, has devoted, you know, decades to the Labour Party. Does that, does that earn him no loyalty? To I'm afraid, as I said, he only has himself to blame for once again repeating that the issue of anti-Semitism, he says, was exaggerated. That makes him well part of the As you well know, as you well know, as you well know, I've never said that anti-Semitism as an evil was exaggerated. I've said the numbers of cases were exaggerated. You know perfectly well what I said. As you know what... So 4% Liz was very impassioned in that clip there. Of course, she completely ignored what Jeremy was saying and just went on a platitude bonanza. I think it's obvious who is being dishonest here. She isn't using any logical arguments, just blazingly lying, actually. So she claims Corbyn has never apologised for anti-Semitism. The BBC, Jeremy Corbyn has apologised again for incidents of anti-Semitism in Labour. The party leader said sorry twice in 2018, but was criticised for refusing to do so four times in a recent interview with the BBC's Andrew Neil. Now, possibly the reason why he refused in that instance is because he's apologised multiple times and for some reason people can't seem to accept that. Here's another instance on ITV. Jeremy Corbyn has apologised for anti-Semitic incidents involving Labour Party members and said he was dealing with the issue. And oh wait, there's another. I'm sorry for the hurt that's been caused to many Jewish people. We have been too slow in processing disciplinary cases of mostly online anti-Semitic abuse by party members. We're acting to speed this process up. People who hold anti-Semitic views have no place in the Labour Party. Of course, what they want isn't an apology and a strategy to actually defeat racism. They want him to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a massive Nazi or, or whatever. Those like Kendall and the Just Apologise Now Brigade clearly don't understand institutional racism. Racism in a political party operates at all levels, not just one man. Funny how the media have forgotten about Labour anti-Semitism when Starmer took over. Because as you well know, racism just disappeared into thin air upon electing a new leader. I mean, I didn't even realise it was that simple. Why is there still racism in society if it can just magically disappear? Well, that doesn't fit the narrative, does it? What Kendall also fails to mention is all the Jewish people who have been suspended or expelled under Keir Starmer. In fact, you are more likely to be suspended or expelled if you are Jewish under Keir Starmer. It's become less safe to be a Jewish Labour member. Will Keir Starmer apologise? Will he apologise for the fact that you are five times more likely to be suspended or expelled from Labour if you are Jewish? Now, I find it really funny that the Labour right, especially those that voted for or supported the Iraq war, which killed half a million, 
find it completely lost on them that imperialist foreign policy is literal racism at a global scale are lecturing Jeremy Corbyn. He's been inside the Labour Party before some of these poisonous people were even born. He's been on the streets fighting racism, fighting apartheid, yet we have some snooty MPs who are parachuted into their nice safe seats where the only work experience they've had were working for private health companies. And if they weren't there before, well, plenty of them have managed to find those jobs after their political careers. This debate won't go away. I know people are fed up with it. I am certainly fed up with it. In fact, the first video on this channel two years ago was literally this topic. You can go and watch it if you like, but warning that the quality of the production is what you expect from a first video. But it's important. It's important to understand where racism comes from in order to defeat it. Now, I've read the EHRC and the Ford report from cover to cover. Most of those calling for Corbyn's head, I'd wager that they haven't. The EHRC states there were two instances where Labour were unlawful. Now, that sounds terrible, yet continue reading and you'll find out why. The reason being was because, according to the EHRC, that Lotto, the leader of the opposition's office, had interfered into cases of anti-Semitism when you're not supposed to. One of them being was a high-profile case regarding Ken Livingston. Now, Corbyn intervened in order to get him disciplined quicker. He wasn't intervening to, you know, help out his mates. And of course, you can say that he shouldn't have intervened. Yet, under Ian McNichol, who was the General Secretary of Labour and noted a member of the Labour right, was doing such an appalling job of fighting anti-Semitism that Corbyn had to intervene. Now, interestingly, the Ford report also challenges some of the claims in the EHRC. They revealed that Corbyn, as he was supposed to, tried staying away from all cases, yet he was constantly bombarded and pretty much forced to intervene since nothing, nothing was getting done under Ian McNichol. The EHRC, which is supposedly damning for Corbyn, confirms his account that he actually improved the system of dealing with anti-Semitism. Now, coincidentally, when the General Secretary changed from an anti-Corbyn person to a pro-Corbyn one, things improved. So it's pretty much proving that the Labour right were using the party machine to undermine dealing with anti-Semitism for factional gain. This was also confirmed in the Ford report. So Jeremy coming out and apologising for things that weren't his fault, without the caveats, which are true, will do nothing to help defeat anti-Semitism because the premise of Labour anti-Semitism will be based on a lie if Corbyn just blindly accepts all of it. And you know what would happen? The media, Blairites and Starmer still wouldn't accept it. Because this isn't about fighting the evil of anti-Semitism. It's simply about getting one up on their political opponents and it's despicable.